Well, two doctors are here with us this morning to talk about a new way to handle mastectomy. It's a revolutionary way to reconstruct the breast for women who have had breast cancer. Today, we are joined by Dr. Noel Sherber. Good morning to you. Morning. Nice to see you. And Dr. Ariel Rad. They both. Good morning to you, Dr. Rad. Both in studio to talk about uh, how love handles can be the answer for women who have undergone a mastectomy. Uh, when, when even when you say that, it sounds like. Very interesting, and how does this work? So I'll start with you, uh, Dr. Sherber. Tell us about this new way to uh, help women get back to normal, we'll say. Well, one of the challenges for women who undergo breast cancer treatment is they can have partial or entire removal of the breast necessary for treatment, and they want reconstructive options that don't involve breast implants. Okay. Breast implants require a lot of monitoring, and MRI scans to make sure they don't rupture. A lot of women would rather have their own tissue, mm -hmm. and so Dr. Rad, help develop a technique to address just that. And you all work together. You're a dermatologist, you're a plastic surgeon. Tell me how uh, your expertise comes in with this. Well, this is a plastic surgical technique. When women don't want to have an implant placed to rebuild the breast, we can transfer tissue from some part of the body, tissue that is made, of, made up of fat, to rebuild the breast. So in this case, uh, we can take fat from the love handle and who loves love handles, mm -hmm. nobody does, <laughs> uh, and create an entire breast. So it's really a great technique. And, and that part isn't new, but it comes from other places, right? Often the buttocks, maybe? Yeah, oftentimes the buttock, and that's the old way it's been done. And you can imagine by taking a lot of fat from the central buttock area, it really flattens it. And that was a major problem. So we wanted to look for a different way to do it. And we saw that there was a blood vessel going to the fat of the love handle. So we thought if we could use the fat, transfer that to the breast and rebuild the breast, but still really improve the love handle area, then that would be a win-win. And maybe somebody out there, I mean, we're talking about breast cancer surgery, so it's not a cosmetic uh, deal wholeheartedly, but you might think about, well, what about the scar? But there's an answer for that as well. Absolutely. Just as there have been innovations in surgical treatments for breast cancer, we've had major innovations in scar treatment. So with laser now, we can really blend scar tissue with the surrounding skin. And while we may not be able to erase it entirely, it's no longer that women are stuck with really disfiguring scars that can act as a big reminder of all that they've been through. So whether we're treating red raised scars, depressed scars, dark scars, we have all these different lasers now that can treat them safely and effectively, no anesthesia, no downtime. Who's eligible for this? As far as there, I would imagine there's a body type that this works mm -hmm. better, better exactly. for. Exactly. Right. Yeah, any woman who does not want an implant, they always have options to use their own tissue. Usually we use the abdominal fat as the first choice, but in slim and trim women with a slim waistline, then this is a, a great option. But keep in mind, this is a very delicate procedure and very few plastic surgeons do this operation because it takes a good amount of time and expertise to perform it. If, if, if people watching are interested or know people who might be interested, how do we get more information? What stage? Is this readily available now? It's definitely readily available now. Okay. Um, what patients should do if they think they may be a candidate for it um, is to look for a plastic surgeon who's a, a certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, somebody who specializes in microvascular breast reconstruction. Okay. Microvascular just means that that person uh, is able to connect tiny blood vessels under a microscope using thread thinner than a human hair. And you can imagine that they, that takes a tremendous amount of expertise. Yes. So at, at centers like Johns Hopkins, um, you know, and major medical centers like that, MD Anderson, Memorial Sloan Kettering, et cetera, they can offer these techniques. I was reading also that this is less complicated than other strategies, if you will. Is that correct? It's less complicated than the old way we used to do it by taking fat from the buttock area. Mm -hmm. um, it makes the surgery more easy for surgeons to perform because we can find that blood vessel um, fairly reliably and the anatomy is actually simpler. So it not only speeds up surgery, so there's less surgery time, there's less anesthesia time, but it makes the surgery go much more smoothly, which is very important. And uh, Dr. Sherber, I'll end with you. I'm, I'm sure that for people watching, it's, it's welcoming news that professionals like yourself still looking to advance the aesthetics of this after you've been so sick. 
Absolutely, and one thing that's important for women to know is insurance will cover these laser treatments often. Okay. So it's important to find a board-certified dermatologist, but also someone who does treat scars routinely. You don't want someone dusting off a laser and mm -hmm. wheeling it out and treating you if they're not really comfortable, because with scars, you have to be ginger. You don't want to do too much to that skin and trigger more scarring. So just ask your dermatologist how many scar treatments they perform with regard to these surgical incisions. and. It's a great strategy that can really help women look wonderful on the other side of such a difficult experience. On the other side, that's where we're trying to go. <laughs> uh, Dr. Noelle Sherber, thank you so thank much. You. Dr. Ariel Rad, thank you for coming thank in you today. Very much. Tony, over to you.